What are we working on today? Well, I'll give you a hint. It entails batteries, inverters, and more batteries. Today I'm working on version 5, 4, the Fiat's, the Volt's, the Leaf's, the Tesla's. So this is version 4. These are the Tesla uh, battery cells that we're going to be installing in the space between. What we're looking at here to you looks like a blowed up mess. And I can understand that. To me, everything makes total sense. On our Victron charger, we have our AC inputs, our AC outputs, which right now, if you follow this extension cord, it's running over here to this nifty little guy, which is just basically a space heater. That's providing a little dummy load for me. What I should be working on is this over here. And what's that you say? Well, that is a leaf motor. And that is the motor I'd like to see go in the boat at 120 kilowatts, roughly 108 horsepower. Um, right now I'm working on dissecting its motor controller. And we've got another motor controller board here that we're going to put in it so that I can basically control it and once I can control this then and only then will we be able to test this with the motor up against what we're doing now you ask why why would you possibly pull out your leaf system that's working perfectly fine well I'll tell you because I can I am stepping down from 60 volts to 24 volts, going from a 6S, from a 14S to a 6S battery, um, so that I can possibly get more amp hours. Now, for you guys that look at things in amp hours, which I know a lot of boaters do, each one of these is capable of 255 amp hours. So total I'll have just over a thousand amp hours at 24 volts now the big thing is is I look at everything in kilowatt hours um, these are five kilowatts a piece I'm gonna be running four of them initially um, until things start to heat up during the summer and then I will probably go to eight I can't tell you I can tell you what I think it's going to do, but I can't tell you what it actually does. Right now, the Leaf batteries will run one air conditioner for eight and a half to nine hours. The main salon, it will run all three ACs for right at three and a half to four hours. You know, this is all uh, temperature dependent. You know, it, as the temperature goes up, obviously, the ACs run more, so you don't, you, the compressors cycle more often during an hour. Um, and I can run two ACs, the main salon, and like one of the hulls for right around five and a half to six hours. Well, I'd like to double all that. And I think with the Leafs, I mean, I think with the uh, Tesla batteries, we're able to do that. So let's jump right in here. First thing we're going to do is pop this uh, plastic cap off. Now, we don't want to take too much off because we want to protect these cells. As you can see, that's a lot of surface area there to uh, ground out anything on should you lay something metal on top of them. So the first thing we're going to do is remove that factory BMS board. Tesla's kind of uh, particular when it comes to programming it and replace it with one of our own uh, BMSs that I custom programmed. In order to do that, we're going to pull these little black pins that are on the side of their BMS board they're just pop pins, they pull right out, and then you can grab the, uh, the main base of them, pull that out. But first, we're going to cut back this plastic tab on the bottom. Just makes uh, access to the whole battery a little bit easier. Now we can pull that BMS off of its plates, and then there's two tabs. One on the bottom, which I already disconnected, and one on the top. And then we have the two thermomisters right in the middle that we're going to disconnect them as well. 
And like I said, Tesla's a little stingy on uh, the code for their BMSs. And while it is out there, I find it uh, a lot easier just to, uh, well, get rid of this garbage. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this daughter board from uh, Stealth EV. The guys over there have been kind enough to go ahead and make these for us for about 30 bucks a piece. And then uh, the BMS will plug right into the top here. So let's plug the thermomisters into the center on the white pin. And then we'll go ahead and make sure that the uh, BMS plug on top is facing up. And I like to plug in the bottom edge connector. Just makes it a little bit easier that way. Now we'll push the BMS into place. Grab a couple of those pop pins that we were talking about. And reverse the process by putting the four pins. They fit in the exact same spot on the stealth board as they did on the factory uh, Tesla BMS. And then last but not least, go ahead and plug in our top edge connector which these are all our battery sensing lines that bring all our voltages in from our six different cells. Now with positive on the right and negative on the left, we're going to put the BMS right in the middle of the tube. But before that, we're going to add a breaker relay. And basically, we're just going to take this brass bus bar, connect it to the top, and secure it onto the positive side of the terminal. But before we do that, we're going to mount our BMS to the back of our stealth daughter board. And then we're going to run our wires from our output for the, each individual cell up to the daughter board. Now we want to keep our wires short and neat. We don't want a big pig pen here. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it and measure up to the top of the stealth board with our wires. Now we're going to cut our leads back and then after we do we're going to hang on to the excess wire and I'll show you what we're going to do with that later. Now let's jump back over to the terminals. I got some 8 millimeter screws, made sure that they wouldn't bottom out on anything and now we're going to mount the bus bar with the 8 millimeter to the positive side and then we're going to take our disconnect relay here. And we're going to make sure that it's facing the right way. And we're going to mount that on with a 10 millimeter screw. But these three prongs on the bottom are for our electronic disconnect. So we can turn the relay on and off remotely. Now we're going to make sure that our 10 millimeters don't bottom out on the relay that could cause damage. And looks like there's a good. And then we're going to connect it to the bus bar. Now, as you can see, our plastic uh, top is slidden back a little bit. So we're going to get that in a little more because uh, lay a metal wrench across those contact plates and you're going to have a bad day. Now, remember those wires we cut off of that BMS? Well, we're going to grab them and the pins and we're going to head over to the soldering station. Now, we're going to take the tail ends that we cut off earlier. We're going to twist them together with the ends that are coming out of the BMS. And then we're going to put the Molex pins that came with the Stealth EV daughter board. And we're going to crimp them on the two wires that have been pushed together using our Molex crimper. And then it's just rinse, wash, and repeat another six times. Now Molex pins have a tendency to back back off. So we're going to take it one step further. We're going to fire up our soldering iron. We're going to flux up our tip because it hasn't been used in a few days. Just put a bunch of solder on it, knock it off. And then we're just going to put the end of the soldering iron directly in the center of the pin. Wait for it to heat up for about two seconds and then push our solder in. And then pull out. It's that easy. I'm sorry you can't see uh, a little better what I'm doing because my hands are in the way, but I don't have a professional camera crew. <laughs> now I've gone ahead and soldered the other Molexes on the ends of those wires as well. And now we're just touching them up with a bit of solder. 
a final once over to make sure that we didn't miss one and we did now that we have all the molex plugs on we're going to go ahead and insert them into the plugs and we're going to make sure that we have the wings out and what i like to call the tongues to the inside now after i get the pin inserted about halfway i take a small jeweler screwdriver and push it the rest of the way in until it clicks in take a look at it make sure that it's all the way flush to the edge and then give it a pull and everything's good now we got to pay attention here because if you look closely the ground is on the top left of our pen and our first is over on the far right which on our BMS connector our first pen is right next to our ground but it's not that confusing and it's on the stealth EV uh, in case you forget but same thing insert the pen give it a shove with a screwdriver and away we go now we're going to install our pins on the very ends of our pigtails onto our battery external voltage uh, sensor. And they're very similar, only this time uh, your negative goes to the far right, and then it will follow in place by pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now since these leads are a little bit longer, as we go I've been wrapping the leads around the last lead, and we'll shove in our final lead, and that'll be that. Okay, so now we've got our BMS done, and so what we're going to do with our BMS is the first thing is we're going to flip it like this. We're going to come under here with it. I've put some double-sided sticky tape down here, but we're not going to stick it down just yet. And then we're going to come over here, and then we're going to run this wire around the corner, measure it, cut it. Strip it, crimp it, and we want to crimp it so that this is flat, like that, crimp it, and now we will take some heat shrink and shrink it. Heat shrink I like to use is this, um, and the reason for the marine heat shrink is it has a uh, on the inside it has a coating that melts and basically surrounds the whole thing in uh, kind of like a hot glue. So we'll go over it to it, and you'll you'll notice. As I heat it up, I just keep heating it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But right out the edges, right in here, is the hot glue that comes out. Now the way this is going to work is this is going to go to here. Your blue goes to your battery, negative. P is your output. So that is going to go to our plug. So we're going to strip that one back a little bit more. And we're going to put a plug on the end of it. <clears throat> that crimps that down. Again, we're going to put a little heat shrink on it. That just keeps... Uh, air and salt from getting into the connector itself and starting it to rust. And that is that, and that is that. This is going to come up and over here. We're going to go ahead and plug in our BMS now. Like so, we're going to open this up, push it back just a smidgen. Peel the other side of our tape off so that now I use this clear 3M tape. It works really well. Um, it doesn't have very good shear properties, but it has excellent <clears throat> holding properties. So the 
way I do it though is I take this, I screw it down. It doesn't have to be tight, it just has to be. And then we're gonna take this, we're gonna make sure we have a little bit of play in the wire there, and we're gonna stick it down just like that. Now then, <clears throat> actually on this one, I was going to do it a little bit differently. I was going to see if I couldn't run this wire. Let's see if I can't pop this up and get this wire to go behind and come out right here. I just think that would be really cool. And it'd be a little cleaner. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna plug it in. Just like that, nice and clean. And then we're going to take a voltmeter and test. Now if you plug a BMS in and it plugs in, you're afraid of it shorting out or hurting it, that's not gonna, usually going to happen even if you have one of the wires wrong the only thing that's going to happen is you'll feel the bms start to get a little warm nowhere near as warm as when it's charging or doing its job but nevertheless it will get a little warm use the grounding plate and we're going to start over here at one three volts now i'll put so you can see it and we're going to go to two Seven, that's right. Go to three, eleven, four, oh, nineteen. Wait a second. We should be rising by four volts at a time. That's oh, there's your, there's the fifteen. There's the eleven. Fifteen. Nineteen and 24, 23. So that's right. Total is 23, 3.8. There they go. Now we move it down to lithium ion and we tell it to start balancing for us. And it's balancing. Now on our positive wire, which I've made an extra one, but we're basically just going to do the same thing. Strip the ends back. Only this time we're going to put a connector for here on it. And before I do any connections, there's a switch under here. I'm going to pull it down. Down turns the battery off through the fuse. Like this. Let's see, where did our shrink wrap go? There it is. Cut that in half. So, the way I ran these last time, is I go under here, over to here, up to here. Again, this is off. So there is no power coming from the battery to it. go now that one didn't click but it is in there we're going to take this it's going to come out the side we're going to take this and we're going to take the battery we're going to lift it up that comes down through there and the little lip goes right under there this is going to come to here 
And then we're going to use our tape like we did on the others to tape all this off so that nothing can tap it or hit it. This is that Kevlar tape. So that will keep anything from accidentally smacking it uh, in transportation and on the boat. So as you can see here, I have our charge curve fixed, our absorption floats, current. Generally, I'm like I said, I'm limiting our input on uh, AC 1 to 20 and AC 2 to 15. That's just due to the size of the wires that I'm using. I'm not allowing any grid back. Inverter, this is where the inverter shuts down and comes back on. So what we're going to do now is shut all this down. Come over to here. We're going to unplug the USB, which is what's talking to the inverter. And we're going to plug in the color control GX and hopefully in a second or two up oh, she'll come right back up and on as she did so basically uh, it thinks our batteries are at 100% but they are not because I haven't reset them since they topped all the way off if we look back here I'm going to unplug the primary which is here and remember we're limiting the current on the secondary now right now, the bat it's taking the uh, batteries and inverting them. And in just a second, it will switch over and we go right back into absor absorption charging and it thinks we're running on the generator. Basically the generator is just another a smaller cord off here, but we've limited it, its input to 15 amps. Now, when we plug the main back in, it automatically, you heard the transfer switch turn off. Now, it will switch over and it will go from generator back to shore power. the transfer switch and we're back on shore power well I hope you found this somewhat informative um, basically that's how I build a battery and like I said join us again next week we'll be installing these puppies in the space between